scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You wake up in the night and sleep and go back and the same experience of them oppressing you supposedly happens again. Some of you, as soon as you finish, you went back. In fact, for some of you, that activity has been on break since you, you became unserious with God. But now that you just started a little prayer, all of a sudden it came. Now let me tell you, Satan will use your senses and tell you the word of God claims this. If God were so powerful, where is it? Then you will now dance to the realm of the senses and say, Kai, that means let me go back to sleep. In Jesus' name, I must go back for the battle to come. You are already defeated. There's no possibility of victory under that condition. In this kingdom, the only instrument, listen carefully, the only, the saints don't fight. Our warfare is the warfare of taking advantage of the forces of the spirit allocated to us. The force of the word the force of the blood the name of jesus and all of these mysteries listen very carefully to enforce i repeat enforce if the purpose of your engaging those things is to create a physical fight you are defeated already the devil will eat you up and, and spit you watch this jesus is standing haven't walked on water to come Peter says, if it be thou, listen carefully now, bid me come. And Jesus says, come. Peter gets up and started walking on water. Are we together? Now, do you think while Peter was walking on the water, the water stopped being boisterous? It still continued. But it's just that because his focus was on Jesus. Are we together? That connection. So the power that kept him on that water was not in his legs. It was on the gaze of Jesus. Are we together now? The moment Peter didn't stop walking on water, he only shifted his gaze to somewhere else and his legs started going down. For as long as his gaze was on Jesus, whatever the storm did, now he's looking at Jesus did not suddenly make the water quiet. It was still boisterous, but he was surprised that the water was not moving him. The element for the victory was his connection with the eyes of Jesus, not his ability to walk well. For as long as his legs remain, but he turned his attention, the Bible says he saw. That's what Satan wants you to see. Satan is a master over the sense realm. If he can deviate your focus to make you see the bulkiness of the challenges, he will bring your faith down and strike you in a way that will affect you. Are we together? God bless you. Thank you, doctor. We discussed access points last week that biblically speaking there are three main access points systems of authorization that Satan uses that demons use all occults all spiritism and any kind of extra physical manifestation of evil thrives upon these three platforms number one covenants covenants we discussed it last week. I'm just giving us a quick review. Number one, covenants. A covenant is the most powerful of the three. Because I told you that a covenant is a system of authorization. 
and that system of authorization can go beyond an individual that's what makes it powerful my obedience may affect me alone are we together but a covenant can allow me to do something um look at this dr sean is here with his wife shade are we together if i ask doctor and i say sir i want to come to your house and he says no then i turn to his wife and say shade i want to come to your house and she says yes the covenant of marriage are we together if obeyed properly i have a right to come to that house and if he quarrels me and say i thought i didn't invite you i say no your wife who has also become one with you allowed me you see why covenants are powerful because when you see satan veto certain things about you and comes is because he knows someone else you are connected to has authorized him are you getting what i'm saying now the same way in israel today i am not aware of many israelis who have come by themselves to call upon jehovah the god of abraham isaac and jacob in fact if you go to visit israel those who take christians on a tour the jewish people are shocked that christians are crying when they see some of these monuments to them is tourism they are waiting to be paid and they see it just come so this is the cave where my savior laid and you kneel down and the jew there is in shock what kind of people are these you are being emotional you go near the wailing wall and you are crying and wailing for your sins and choking prayer points at the wall and the guy is waiting for you to finish and just pay him his money yet in the midst of it you try to kill that israeli and a covenant he's not aware of will arise and defend him what kind of unfair thing is this they farm on a mountain that should not grow yet there is something that makes the earth to increase to them remember that person doesn't believe in jesus yet when god looks at them he sees abraham and sees the covenant the most feared nation on earth a little nation but indestructible by a mystery that even themselves they cannot understand the rabbinical institutes have spent decades studying what is the secret behind the immunity of the nation of israel israel is my firstborn god has made a covenant with the firstborn the apple of his eyes that he will kill and slay any nation because of a covenant and it's an everlasting covenant that he has made so when your grandfather was draining the blood of a goat near fire you were in the loins of prophecy but then he was saying look protect us and we contract this entire estate to you watch this then all of a sudden like i said last week some white missionaries from america just came and they said what are you guys doing they say for 150 years we have been serving this shrine say no no we bring you good news of glad tidings jesus has come this is old we present to you jesus and then you embrace the gospel of salvation and you felt that peace in your heart you were happy you were glad i have received jesus two weeks later the missionaries started dying one by one remember they are the ones who got you born again and you were happy two weeks later your farm stopped producing as usual your peace was still in you you were happy and you loved jesus then you decided to come together to pray and while you prayed and prayed and prayed you just found out that one of your child started running mad on the street listen brothers and sisters there are seven gospels jesus left to the church i'm not about to preach it now but the gospel of salvation is only one of them there is the gospel of the kingdom it is the gospel of the kingdom that reveals to you the keys of the kingdom they are not called the keys of salvation there is the gospel of the kingdom how you engage these mysteries to manifest that which is finished from the foundations of the earth i hate to be a bearer of bad news but it's just that many of us are not honest enough to look at our lives and look at our dear parents 
and look at our siblings one of our dear ladies she might be here I remember it was during was it during Christmas or early New Year this year her mother and, and, and I'm sorry to just have to talk about it but her mother a godly woman was standing in church sir just like everybody wonderful woman of God in the presence of everybody looking at her in the house of God with the anointing of the Spirit she fell down face forward in the presence of everybody and died right there prayer warriors came and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened while that would happen her father paralyzed completely paralyzed completely in this place I'm not talking of another place when I heard that I said this is it this is it I must teach this this year this is it now do you know the family of that lady will almost beat you if you go to them with arrogance and say ladies and gentlemen look I don't know what you believe but that lady I think there are few people I know that pray like that lady in terms of consistency of the spiritual discipline of prayer what could be wrong what are we not seeing when Jesus walked the earth it was not like that the invincibility of his victory was incontestable what is wrong with our understanding So covenant number two I taught us that the second access point is ignorance don't forget ignorance ignorance is a force in the spirit just like faith ignorance is a force it can cause things to happen in fact the Bible calls a certain class of the demonic organogram rulers of darkness that means their domain of dominion is every time there is lack of illumination when they come to a life or they come to a physical territory where there is lack of spiritual illumination their dominion is activated they are called rulers of the darkness of this world not another world so they search for everywhere there is darkness in this world and that becomes their jurisdiction of authority Archbishop Benson Idahosa was explaining the power of light and its ability to conquer darkness and he said that there was darkness in a land it was a story there was darkness in a land for many weeks and the people in that land went to the sun to complain s-u-n and they said son please help us there is darkness in our land and the son said you mean it darkness everywhere he said yes and then it the said the son said okay i'm coming to see the darkness and when the sun came there for three weeks and found out there was no darkness he said I've been you people are wasting my time I've been here for three weeks and I can't find the darkness and they said for as long as you are here the darkness cannot come so there is light the light shines the light shines notice the Bible never says the light appears in darkness uh -uh. it is not the appearance of light that takes away darkness it is the shining it is the shining not just the appearance the light shines in darkness the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together number three disobedience disobedience having the readiness to judge all obedience all disobedience when your obedience is complete disobedience authorizes the gates of darkness the gates of hell to prevail over the sins very quickly let's look at levels of satanic influences blessed be the name of the Lord is God speaking to someone tonight there are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints there is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in Christ but there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though 
you are in Christ. Let's look at it very quickly. Number one, the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception. Write it down. Deception. The first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all is deception. And this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever. It was Paul who was speaking um, um, which of the church now help me it says Galatia the church in Galatia it says oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you let's look at a few scriptures very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and verse 13 if we can run through it very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll, look, we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and 13 media please help us second peter chapter 2 And then we'll look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. The Bible says, And many shall follow their pernicious ways, deceptive ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The Bible is talking of a kind of deception here. Are we together now? I don't want to go into other... Uh, more modern version so that you see what pernicious there is but just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here go to verse 12 please 12 and then 13 it says but this paul is really i mean apostle peter here is really angry and he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive he said but this as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not speak evil of the things that they understand not it says and shall utterly perish in their own corruption that means that believers have been made to be deceived by the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand there are many people who would have been delivered but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself he's not being deceived took them away from the lights that would have blessed them the bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand there is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church and there are many of us men of god who are victims of this there are many believers who would not have been in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship and we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds that derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty they followed us away from their breakthrough let's look at the second revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 again media please help us very quickly we are still looking at deception three verses here i found just to explain the different kinds of deception this is talking about the great dragon revelation 12 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived how many the whole world so satan part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception he deceived the whole world the bible says he was cast into where he was cast into where uh oh earth there's a problem the deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven unfortunately he landed here what do you think will happen here on earth deception so he comes to eve and manipulates eve comes to adam and says adam come let me tell you something did god really say that a b c d 
and adam said well he said we may freely eat of the fruit if said this and that and that and then he said no there is something god is hiding from you god is hiding this i hope you know that satan never um satan never wanted i used to think satan wanted to replace god no no satan didn't want to replace god he wanted to run a parallel government i will be like not i will be the most high the god continue your throne sit there i will also say, i want to sit by your right hand now you understand what happened to man satan wanted to sit let's let's go since since the word eloha elohim it is plural add me to the godhead that's what he wanted i am i have done too much i hope you know i, I like oh dear i don't want to go into the pre adamite dispensation but i hope you know when you begin to read jeremiah chapter 4 i, I don't want to go there don't, don't don't go there media um for time's sake you you realize that satan was sent as a representative of the love of god to the then civilization and the then creation what jesus represents to our civilization was what lucifer the light bearer the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he was sent he didn't just deceive a third of the angels are you seeing how powerful his deception is a third of the angels that are in heaven where god is they fell for him talk more of you and then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes and the kings and the nations lamented they say you have become like one of us jeremiah chapter 4 when you read you who brought the nations the bible says he weakened the nation that was his sin it was not just pride there was something he made that made the nations weak and now he has become like one of us and he raised up a lamentation then you begin to compare with other scriptures that's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan, the first occupant I told you of the garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. That was in Eden, the garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there, Satan said, okay, God finish and go. And let me come to the garden I'm used to. He knew where to found to find Eve. He never said, Eve, where are you? It's God that said, Adam, where are you? Satan always knows where to find them. I know where frail human beings can be found. Let me tell you, every man, even from Adam, was born with the tendency to sin. In iniquity, Jeremiah said, Did my mother? He never said in sin remember it's iniquity that produces sin iniquity is a state of the heart the propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing that's why he said um, subdue replenish he used the word subdue in other words be careful there is a stranger i don't want to tell you his story but don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden and then satan came you think he came to eve one day no he had been coming Ah, Eve, so you are here today. I said, don't disturb me. God is coming in the cool of the day. He said, okay, let's talk Eve. Satan's deception is so powerful. Remain small. He would have gotten Jesus. Read your Bible. <laughs> Satan for you. When Satan took Jesus up the mountain, he tempted it on, him on three things that, re, that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth. The first dimension was your personal need. That's where the temptation started from jesus you are hungry remember part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need so satan i mean jesus don't watch stones like this when you are dying of hunger the power of god is able to turn stones into bread do it and jesus said no and satan found out okay i see you are so obsessed with your assignment you have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom next temptation let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of god why route it the hard way all the kings that are in these systems i deceive them and place them there they are my boys bow to me and let me just give you their heart instead of routing through the cross and all this pain are you seeing satan now he left jesus for a season he said i'm coming notice he never came directly to jesus again satan for you 
the next time we see satan coming he's coming to peter remember the goal is to jesus then the next time we see him again judas then the next time in jesus's weakness he now comes and manipulates his mind and jesus for the first time says father is it possible that you take this cup off me and jesus said no nevertheless nevertheless not my way if jesus prayed that prayer the father would have granted him yes because he always hears me jesus said it at the grave of lazarus i thank thee father because you always hear me i ha i had to pray this in open so that they will know I'm not my my open prayer is not an act of unbelief i'm saying it to minister to them i thank thee because you always hear me if jesus stopped at that prayer the father would have said well i cannot be a demon to usurp your will you have chosen to abort redemption so let it be and that would be it he still will be the word but there is no longer fruits of redemption he will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten but thank God he endured and he has now become not just the only begotten but the first begotten of the father we being the proceeds of that salvation and the Bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue are we together deception the third way deception can happen Ephesians 5 verse 6 God, we have to run. We have to run. At least let's, let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray. Let no man deceive you with what? Help me. So the third instrument of deception is vain words. You can use words that may look very spiritual. Expressions, theologies, spiritual communications that because they are deep, and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate i can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries and in the end of it you are bamboozed by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of God on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the world are we together now that the Word of God is able to establish you the Bible declares that I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified so the Word of God is able to give us wisdom wisdom number two the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control manipulation and control the first realm the realm of deception thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive that keep men subject to the laws of satan like we shared in luke 22 give us luke 22 and verse 31 this was the encounter that jesus had with peter remember luke 22 the lord said to simon watch this Simon remember was a disciple of Jesus although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know but the fact that they were in close touch with the word of God alone should create some system of immunity yet Satan penetrated all of that and came again through Simon 
the chiefest of the apostles are we together he was forbidding jesus that jesus should not talk about death no jesus don't talk about the cross and everything and jesus was say oh simon you love me so much you are such a kind man jesus looked at him and said no this is not kindness this is this is the devil wants to use he's taking advantage now watch this are you seeing how manipulation and control happens it takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly and satan can buy into it to become what you if you have compassion satan can use compassion to deceive you if you have intelligence satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you here he takes advantage of peter's compassion peter thought he was being sympathetic to jesus jesus you've done too much don't talk about death ah, i'm going to miss you what does a good leader do oh I, I, you guys are all wicked people i'm talking of dying and none of you is crying peter come i love you in fact when i when, when as i'm going to heaven you will receive my mantle for being this compassionate hear what jesus says jesus looks at peter with the tears running from his eyes and says get thee behind me this is jesus why didn't he look at the ground get no 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 he looks at peter get thee behind me simon simon he said satan had desired to do what have you that he may sift you as wheat next verse but i have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted he say use this same formula to strengthen your brethren that means intercede for them too because satan will come are you seeing why intercession is important in a church for the saints paul was praying that we we pray that that um, um prayers and supplications be offered for those in government for this and that that we may live a peaceable and a quiet life if you don't pray satan will sway people manipulation the realm of the mind now this is where it looks as though believers are possessed are we together because you see when you are i, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now that that's for series three are we together but you notice even here in koinonia and even you know right now as i've been talking you are seeing believers that you know love god but in the pro they themselves are shocked all of a sudden they start crying and talking things and saying things and you look at them and you say ah, but this person is a believer why is this person suddenly crying out and your spirit is leaving the person the physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same it takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there so be careful so you don't blackmail believers and all of a sudden you see a mecca now standing and i touch his head and he's manifesting i say see, see this guy these, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in koinonia no no that kind of talk is is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes don't blackmail believers just because of this and again we prophets and apostles i think we must be warned in jesus name because we are the ones who advocate this confusion just because you look and see a snake you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry he knows he's not a snake he knows he's not a fool he loves god with all his heart he's surprised that he was manifesting and he's ashamed and he he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall so that means they are sound not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head are we together god bless you so the realm of the mind manipulation and control this is where satan sways our thoughts ah. it is manipulation and control is so powerful it will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers not unbelievers unbelievers are so flexible the sincerity of their heart doesn't even it allows them to find truth 
it is believers that are quick to look at men of God Apostle Joshua Selman how can a young man like that have crowd like be careful Lord we are in the end times and you will think you are being sincere are we together now manipulation it is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much he now uses his face to you in a dream watch this somebody that loves you and is praying for you maybe your mother now appears and you go and say apostle prophet I saw my mother with a knife and he said I've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch and all of a sudden you carry axe and straight to your village and your mother said oh my dad don't darling me anything so you are the one behind my pain manipulation both the counselor and the counselee both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control are we together now very important satan can manipulate you the moment he sees that you are get you are praying over a challenge in your life and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the lord he withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying you will take you will take the withdrawal to be victory established then you will now say because he knows that you never seek god until there is trouble so the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the lord you will see a temporary victory and you say ah that's it the dream has stopped and so you continue in that low level and think you are safe whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter is god giving us intelligence tonight manipulation do you know brothers and sisters i look at my own life let me be honest with you I look at my own life I look at my background and brothers and sisters I'm shocked at how well-meaning my life was and how Satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines with theories with all kinds of things it's amazing sometimes I sit down and I listen to men of God sometimes I attend conferences and I see people and I see very well-meaning believers but I am afraid sometimes even very anointed I am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations the very context of their doctrine will tell you that they are under manipulation There are all kinds of manipulations if i get up today for instance as a man of god and i believe that every other church and every other ministry in zaria is wasting god's time except me that state is already a sign of progress in an attack are you getting what i'm saying if i believe that I'm the most anointed man of God in Zaria and that every other person especially our fathers our reverends here and there they are just talkatives wasting God's time the fact that I could accept that imagination why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that I could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that I'm a victim of manipulation and control are you getting what I'm saying now dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack dishonor to constituted authority we are all men of God there's nothing you have that I don't have is a sign of this level of attack listen very carefully the pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this you will not know Oh, I come and I say, look, I've, I've fasted for 40 days. Mr. Man, how long do you fast? He said, well, I managed to do two. Like, <laughs> love is like, this guy. Yeah, still, I pray that God will bring you up. Oh, I'm going to go and pray. And you think that just because you did that is a show of spirituality. It could be that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you. But it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind then on the other hand you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say look all you guys need you see you see wisdom is profitable to direct this prayer prayer is this all nonsense you are just praying stupid that state too is another version of manipulation are you getting the point now yes 
the fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of god working for you is big deception i'm repeating this thing again i believe in prosperity we've taught a lot on success systems but learn this i think the church of the lord jesus christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life in terms of financial abundance no remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery babylon can enrich the kings of the earth she's a merchant she can make men rich so just because i'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread you can mistaken the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because i have tea and bread my life is all right it's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege and i myself can be deceived because the moment i want to think about my life and a lot comes one million that means this thing is in place if it was not in place i mean where did the devil stop it from the bank let's be very careful a man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has i'm not against abundance now i hate poverty we all do as a ministry are we together but at the same time we must be careful there are many people whose lives are not all right just because they have a lot of money they just turn and look at other poor it's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed even if he's free he will not agree because the whiplash of the uh, what call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right even when he has been delivered there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful when someone does not eat it's easy that's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses it's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage are we together manipulation and control number three find somewhere to stop here tonight is complete possession that means complete possession of your spirit your soul your body the entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness this is called possession the Bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing. Mark chapter 5. The madman in Gadara. Do you know why he was a madman? In fact, he was not even a madman. We only call him mad simply because of the context of our civilization. The goal of the demons was not to make him mad. They were just too many in one person. And so his activity looked like that of somebody who is insane. The goal was not insanity. How could you have a legion of demons and be all right based on men's context of civilization? Imagine the war. This one is saying, cut this stone. And so he just remained. And notice how restful he was. The Bible says he would sit down in a cave quietly. They came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. It's a long reading. We'll find somewhere to stop verse 2 let's continue and when he was come out of the ship listen carefully immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what you see that was not a madman it was just a man with too many unclean spirits a man with an unclean spirit verse 3 who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains a man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him verse 5 okay and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stone 6 but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him now you would think that worship is homage no this is satan at work deception this uh, let me tell you this when satan knows you will overpower him
his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you remember in the book of acts these are the holy men of god they have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom so that the day paul goes will say since we can't see paul we know that you are allies in ministry and the deception will continue be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you it's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there so that you will be struck eventually but when he saw jesus he ran and worshipped him verse 6 and he cried out with a loud voice and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high god i adjure thee by god satan speaking through a man i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not eight oh dear I'm sorry mark is not giving us the context i'm looking for anyway we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there one of the synoptics that talks about the legions i thought that was where it will lead us for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit mark gave us an epistle of one spirit but we know i think um ah okay mark leaves it there too and he asks him what is thy name identify yourself now there has been a debate about this i don't i will talk about it next week talking to demons talking back to you will address it don't worry trust me my name is joshua selman justice will be done adequately are we together now and he asked him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is is that a name my name is what legion suddenly he now changes from i to we we are many don't be deceived that only one person is speaking we are many multiple spirits can exist within the same entity strange so your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you another spirit many spirits legions we are many verse 10 and he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country this is another discussion how can demons beg and say okay apostle cast us out of here but let's not go outside of new extension we have been in new extension for a long time look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have they know that there is jurisdiction of their influence and saying if you take us out of that jurisdiction there is no basis for dominion so leave us within our prescribed territory we will leave the individual you are interested in but leave the territory this is a message that many of us need to learn so it can leave you but it's still around you waiting for a moment when you will grant access again jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man so demons can leave men let it not surprise you that demons leave men the bible says he goes through arid regions and not finding any place of habitation it will tell itself i will return back to my house you are born again he's still calling you his house you see how tenacious satan is my house and he comes and finds it swept clean but empty then it doesn't enter alone it gathers seven greater than itself look at that system of coordination seven greater than itself and returns and they comfortably stay in you so that the end of that man is even worse don't miss the next part three of this i will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete and i'll be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever you know because this is I, i'm already going ahead of myself i want to solve that problem there are many well-meaning believers who teach that deliverance is an ongoing continuous and forever process in a way they are right and in a way they are wrong when i teach you the dimensions of deliverance we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong the deliverance of transformation because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation it is an ongoing process christ being the standard on and the reference so in that way it is correct but deliverance like a continual exorcism 
casting away of spirit beings the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away are you getting me now all of that we're going to deal with next week we have to find a place to tie it today levels of satanic influence number one deception we're just doing a recap number two manipulation and control number three complete possession look up please of all these three levels the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept you have to understand an old jewish practice called salt covenant uh, the salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries and they would use salt are we together you would bring your salt i will bring my salt and we'll pour it together in a vessel and mix it the condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out are we together so our redemption is in the similitude of that kind complete possession by the authority of scripture i do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit soul and body although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation are you getting where the error comes from now so like i said if i pray we're going to start praying shortly and many of you even as you are listening to me now will find out that you start manifesting and sometimes in the manifestation you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed are we together and if you do not discern with understanding you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed i've seen many people join the line after koinonia and then they ask me apostle am i a witch i said what is the meaning of that he said please i'm tired of everybody around saying i'm a witch even a witch listen carefully even a witch is not entirely possessed hmm. you see that that thing we call witch and wizards no There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman also, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans. The salvation is not for them they cannot access the redemptive work of Jesus otherwise probably the angels would have re repented salvation is not for angels salvation is not for any other beings in fact in fact listen very carefully the scope of salvation starts as as far as the authority of scripture reveals to us starts from the Adam the man who originated our human civilization if you were before adam there was another system are we together it was not redemption through the blood of the eternal son of god because when according to apostle peter when jesus went to hell the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-adamites we know that by those who resurrected with him are we together now the bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of jerusalem then having ascended to the father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there the atonement he now came and they all went together are we together now so we know that it is true that that uh, apostle peter lets us know that jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers but if you were not of adam that's why jesus is called the second adam so it starts from there there are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation but they are on earth satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them 
are you getting what i'm saying now so you can find some of these entities the fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials but material bodies and then you will also see them manifest in material bodies i'm not talking of entering a human being they themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material but it's not a human being those are the kinds that we that's the classic proof of wizardry are we together now it's not just an individual who has been possessed there is a dimension of that but there are beings on earth that you see they are humanoid in their context but they are not human beings they are not progenitors from from adam salvation they can't receive salvation it is this kind that the bible says spare not a witch to live You will be blessed with a lot of balance um if there's something I, I want to reserve it till part three because as i just said that thing, many of you now are afraid okay so if they don't leave you are trying to say they die so what does that mean because many of you have seen ministries uh, respectfully great ministries like mountain of fire and all of that sometimes you see them say die and then you're now saying so what is it and men of god have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die we will find out how spirits die because spirits die <laughs> hmm. ah, jesus the greatest strength of satan the one factor that makes satan look powerful over lives is one word the flesh write it down the flesh next or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it we'll start from there the flesh i have to stop now no matter what level of deliverance you go through every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh are we together now this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in in futility comes from and attempts to continue to cast out spirits cast out spirits cast out spirits and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say eh, eh. to mean you are powerful and is waiting he knows so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that god has brought to you are we blessed rise up on your feet rise up please you reign you reign hello king you reign you reign
Manchester Majesty, we declare your majesty Sing it as we enthrone his majesty Over all the works of darkness One minute we are going to pray just two prayer points i like you to lift up your voice and declare that in the name of jesus i'm walking in the experience of the victory the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the death of jesus the victory of his triumphant resurrection lift your voice and declare Never will it become a prophetic reality. It is becoming my experience. Victory over generational curses. Victory over yokes and bondages. Lord, I declare, Lord, I declare, complete victory over the works of darkness. Hallelujah. 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 I know that I've not, I've not taught it the next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements. But one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood. Are we together? It's one of the three witnesses. The Bible says, and there are three witnesses that bear, three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It says that there are three witnesses. This is where the problem is, the earth. It says the spirit, the water, and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel the man had died but Abel the blood was speaking and he cried and God himself had to say no something is happening although the man had died but the blood is still speaking I'd like you to engage the blood and say in the name of Jesus I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood I invoke the advocacy of the blood open your mouth and speak open your mouth and speak over every pattern, over every curse, over every yoke. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon your life, upon your family, when I see the blood upon every ordinance against you, I will pass over. When I see the blood upon the pronouncements in your family, I will pass over. Lift your voice and invoke the blood. We declare that the blood speaks. Declare the mystery of God's mercy. The blood speaks. We declare the priesthood of Jesus that is after the order of Melchizedek. Higher than 
than the Aaronic priesthood. Higher than the priesthood of Noah. We declare in the name of Jesus. Shabakato Sabarata. The blood speaks. The blood speaks over the ordinance of our fathers. The blood speaks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help that lady, please. The Bible says, listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. Something is happening here. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue. Remember, I'll be sharing with you. Every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun. The sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth. That's why the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you. The sun does not smite in itself. But I can take advantage of the sun. Every activity demonically on earth. Without the, when there was darkness upon the earth, there was no demonic activity. Until light returned, then Satan now returned with his activity too. When there was, all through the period of darkness, the only entity we see is the Spirit of God. We never hear of any demon jumping. The moment the sun was withdrawn, and the moon was withdrawn, so the psalmist said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Witchcraft thrives only with the sun. That's why Jesus himself is called the son of righteousness that can arise with healings. Thou shall not be. He said the son shall not smite you. That means for as long as there is sun and there is moon, I can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you. That will tap the power of the sun to smear you away. Watch this. Hold on. Joseph goes to bed and has a dream. And here's his dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. And I saw 11 stars. Remember all of them are lights. They are just different kinds of light. Bowing to me. When Jacob had this. Jacob said so. Me. Jacob called himself the sun. So I will bow. And my wife who gets her glory from me like the moon from the sun and then your brothers who are also stars will bow to you Jacob was worried the sun bowing the sun can bow the moon can bow even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow what is this power that can make the sun bow by next week I'll share with you how God delivered me you know I've been telling you what I went through but I've not shared with you how I came out this is what I want to share with you Kai. look let me tell you you don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit you will smash the gates of darkness he said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder That you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to Satan and say I dare you I will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him I'm happy his name is called Joshua Hi. <laughs> watch this watch this every time God wanted to bring redemption to men he didn't just bless them he did something to the sun and the moon to realign them to their advantage hezekiah was about to die and when god turned his life he said as a sign i will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it kill you will no longer be able to touch you Joshua looked at the sun and said Jericho is not an ordinary city they are fortified because they have done something 
even with the sun and the moon and he said son there is war about to be fought and because of that stand still it's not just because of light sun stand still moon hold your peace and all of a sudden Jericho suddenly became afraid the diviners in Jericho said this thing is not working again they said what happened they said someone has done something to the sun Jericho was close and they were afraid the, na the nation of Israel were not fighting they are they, the Bible said they were close none went out none entered they said we're in trouble the sun and the moon you will see why herbalists do all kinds of things and drop a mirror on the ground and use a sun and uh, or the sun and make stupid enchantments and we laugh and say oh it doesn't matter and all of a sudden you will now see why the psalmist categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night there are arrows that fly only by day the what empowers them is the sun there is the destruction that wasted in noonday once it is 12 on the dot that destruction can start please be interested in what i'm sharing because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of these mysteries there is what can subdue causes yes it is the blood of jesus yes it is all of this but the dynamics of that operation brothers and sisters the powers that hold africa are powerful don't trivialize it jesus is above all i don't in any way demean the power of god if i did i would not be standing here if i did this koinonia will not be standing here if i'm faking what i tell you i will not open my mouth to declare this because that means i won't be able to sleep this night too who can stand against the lord no one can no one will we are still on that exercise of night prayers I know some of you have not been doing it don't do it as a ritual but I want you to receive grace to do it with understanding forget about what happens just do what I ask you to do it doesn't matter whether even if you are praying and a demon appears. don't worry you are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of God conquer the realm of the flesh are we together? We are going to receive grace to pray but I want to pray for you right now please just help anyone under the anointing just two minutes and then we are done in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I, my God I'm seeing a sword right now I declare every hold of darkness even in this series help them jesus look at what is happening there in the name of jesus you know my voice i was once your victim but tonight has come as one who has been given the keys of david by the mercies of god i declare right now in the name of jesus everyone here under the sound of my voice who is under any kind of siege right now be free in the name of jesus 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 every family 
under any kind of siege that is mocking your Christian integrity and making God's word look like a lie. Shabakatoka sata, embreketoka shabalakata, reketoka tosh, shabaskata sata, rakato shabariata kata. In the name of Jesus, fire. I'm seeing fire. That's what I'm seeing from heaven. Shabokotos kabariata ta, man takoto shegete gete, embrekete loko shabarika, ma prakatos karia. I'm praying for you in the spirit. Sheketo koto shamana. In the name of Jesus, I cause the plague of witchcraft. I cause the plague of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus. Every voice speaking against everyone's destiny. The Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. The Bible says he nailed it to the cross. I declare and I decree by the substitutionary sacrifice of the eternal begotten of the Father. I cause every power that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I reverse any ordinance in the spirit over every individual over every family i command a reversal now in the name of jesus and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession let me pray for you everything that must enter your hand the open doors that the blood of Christ release. Help them, please. Everything you have seen in the realm of the spirit, God has shown you dreams that you are a possessor. God has shown you dreams. Your children, your breakthrough, your lifting, your speed, your job, your marriage. In the name of Jesus, I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. And I pray for you. The Bible says when you catch a thief, he won't just restore what he stole because he has wasted your time by stealing. Can I speak restoration? Let me tell you, there are many of us who have lost things some you have lost time Masha Makata Lekotos Kabata Joshua said son go back move go back I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus I prophesy as one sent in the name that is above all names everything the devil took away from you I command a restoration now I command a restoration now whatever you have lost in time i speak to you between today and friday coming i pray that someone will have the faith to believe this prayer may my god the god of jeshuron arise and surprise you arise and surprise you we call him ebenezer the helper of israel i declare oh god arise oh god arise Hallelujah. The Bible says, The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Do you know why? Because when that pressure comes upon the righteous, the pressure will make them dip their hands in iniquity. I will share with you a mystery. It was the delay of the coming of the bridegroom that made the oil of five of the virgins to finish if the bridegroom came early all ten will be alive they all started alive but when there was delay five started going down we have to end thank you lord jesus father we bless you we bless you for the spirit of revelation 
we bless you for the abundance of what you are doing in our midst even in this season Lord Jesus we pray for tomorrow in the name of Jesus we thank you for our doctors we thank you for that which we are doing by your grace for this community Lord we pray for the worship concert on Sunday let it be such an avalanche of your glory may your glory visibly rest upon us we pray for the worship team as they lead us in worship oh god anoint them in a supernatural way we decree and declare that you will be glorified as we lift up the sounds of worship right from zaria to the nations of the earth we pray oh god that a shofar will also sound in the spirit that will bring liberation will bring healings will bring signs and wonders we give you all the glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let me make the altar call very quickly please keep standing you heard me say the only way to be free from possession is when your spirit is joined to the spirit of the christ the bible says and whoever does not have the spirit is none of his there are people here you probably are following online you're here in the main auditorium you may be a visitor overflow one overflow two overflow three and by the roadside wherever i want to give you an opportunity we're not playing games this is very serious business there are people here saying apostle i love the things of god but i've never formally handed my life over to christ and others are saying i at one point or the other gave my life to jesus but because of the pressures like i said the delay of the coming of the bridegroom caused even the oil of the five virgins to finish and it caused them to begin to slumber until they missed it you may be in that category whichever of the two you are in i want to give you an opportunity now hallelujah if you are in overflow one overflow two and the main auditorium I will request that you come out and just stand here as I pray with you. If you are at overflow three, for the sake of time and distance, may I request that you just move to the front of your projector screen and just follow me as I lead the saints um, in this prayer. God bless you. You are here. Make your way to the front. Let's appreciate them as they come. Some of you, it is your coming that will culminate to the salvation of your family members. Don't take it for granted. You are not just coming for yourself alone. Your redemption is the redemption of your family. He said, as for me and my house, it has to be me first before my house. It can be my house before me. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Jesus is drawing many to the fold. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, win that war in your hearts. There's nothing to be ashamed of. He said, ye must be born again. It's not just a religious initiation into a church, into a whatever it is. No, it is the foundation for a solid work with God. Someone may be thinking about it and say, Apostle, I'm not sure I'm bad. I don't do anything bad as, as much as I know. I'm just not sure I've handed my life to Jesus. Join them. Join them. When the Titanic sank, there were only two names. Those who were saved and lost. If you were not sure you were saved you were lost as simple as that there's no hanging around the fence you are either fully completely and consciously in Christ or you are outside of Christ is there someone saying I'm in this category I want to join them make your way very quickly and join them as I lead them in this prayer if there's anyone please join them very quickly thank you brothers and sisters for this noble decision lift your right hand and I want you to say this after me convincingly. Let this be from the depth of your heart. You are not just reciting a poem after a man of God. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Jesus is in this place. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. And I declare that Jesus is my savior. That Jesus is is my lord now and forever i receive eternal life i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare 
that I reign in life. I declare that I'm a child of God and I begin to walk in victory. Amen. God bless you. Jesus, thank you for these precious brothers and sisters in here, online, and at the overflow outside. I declare that you receive these ones and that they receive of the gift of your spirit. And I pray that beginning from today, they are declared the righteousness of God and they begin to walk in the full expression of all that redemption has made available. We give you all the things. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare the power of the flesh, the power of Satan in the name of Jesus broken over your life. I set you free and I declare that you begin to walk in victory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A big congratulations to you. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands, all of you in concert. Follow the gentleman waving your hands and there will be a group of people to welcome you on our behalf. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.